It's been a while since we've added an episode to our playlist of international healthcare systems. Let's do another. Taiwan is proof that a country can make a swift and huge change to its healthcare system, even in the modern day. It's also the topic of this week's healthcare triage. The United States, in part because of political stalemate, part because it's been hemmed in by history, has been unable to make bold changes to its healthcare system. Singapore, which we talked about years ago, tinkers with its healthcare system all the time. Taiwan, in contrast, revamped its system top to bottom in one fell swoop. Less than 25 years ago, Taiwan had a patchwork system that included insurance provided for those who work privately or for the government, or for trade associations involving farmers and fishermen. Out-of-pocket payments were high, physicians practiced independently, and in March of 1995, all of that changed. After talking to experts from all over the world, Taiwan chose William Shao, a professor of economics at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, to lead a task force to design a new system. Uwe Reinhardt, a longtime Princeton professor, also contributed significantly to the effort. Dr. Reinhardt, who died last month, was a panelist on an Upshot article that we did comparing international healthcare systems in a tournament format a couple months ago. The task force studied countries like the United States, Britain, France, Canada, Germany, and Japan, much like healthcare triage. In the end, Taiwan chose to adopt a single payer system, like that found in Medicare or in Canada, not a government run and implemented system like in Britain. At first, things did not go as well as hoped. Although the country had been planning the change for years, it occurred quite quickly after democracy was established in the early 1990s. The system, including providers and hospitals, was caught somewhat off guard, and many felt that they'd not been adequately prepared. The public, however, was much happier about the change. Today, most hospitals in Taiwan remain privately owned, mostly nonprofit. Most physicians are still either salaried or self-employed in practices. The health insurance Taiwan provides is comprehensive. Both inpatient and outpatient care are covered, as well as dental care, over-the-counter drugs, and traditional Chinese medicine. It's much more thorough than Medicare is in the United States. Access is also quite impressive. Patients can choose from pretty much any provider or therapy, wait times are reasonably short, and patients can go straight to specialty care without a referral. Premiums are paid for by the government, employers, and employees. The share paid by each depends on income, with the poor paying a much smaller percentage than the wealthy. Taiwan's cost of health care rose faster than inflation, as it has in many other countries. In 2001, co-payments for care were increased, and in 2002 they went up again, along with premiums. In those years, the government also began to reduce reimbursement to providers after a reasonable number of patients was seen. It also began to pay less for drugs. Finally, it began to institute global budgets, caps in the total amount paid for all care, in the hope of squeezing providers into becoming more efficient. Relative to the United States and some other countries, Taiwan devotes less of its economy to health care. In the early 2000s, it was spending 5.4% of GDP, and by 2014, that number had risen to 6.2%. By comparison, countries in the OECD spend on average more than 9% of GDP on healthcare, and the United States spends about twice that. After the most recent premium increase in 2010, which by the way was only the second in their history, the system began to run surpluses. This is not to say that the system is perfect. Taiwan has a growing physician shortage, and physicians complain about being paid too little to work too hard, although doctors in nearly every system complain about that. Taiwan is an aging population and a low birth rate, which will push the total cost of care upward with a smaller base from which to collect tax revenue. Taiwan's done a pretty good job at treating many communicable diseases, but more chronic conditions are on the rise. These include cancer and cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease, all of which are expensive to treat. The health system's quality could also be better. Although OECD data aren't available for the usual comparisons, Taiwan's internal data show that it has a lot of room for improvement, especially relating to cancer and many aspects of primary care. Taiwan could perhaps fix some of this by spending more. As we've showed in our many episodes on international healthcare systems, though, complaints can be made about every system, and the one in the United States is certainly no exception. For a country that spends relatively little on healthcare, 
Taiwan's accomplishing quite a bit. Comparing Taiwan and the United States may appear to be like comparing apples and aardvarks. One is geographically small, with only 23 million citizens, while the other is vast and home to well over 300 million. But Taiwan is larger than most states, and a number of states, including Vermont, Colorado, and California, have made pushes for single-payer systems in the last few years. These have not succeeded, however, perhaps because there's less tolerance for disruption in the U.S. than the Taiwanese were willing to accept. Regardless of which healthcare system you might prefer, Taiwan's ambition shows what's possible. It took five years of planning and two years of legislative efforts to accomplish its transformation. That's less time than the United States has spent fighting over the Affordable Care Act, with much less to show for it. We love to make videos about things that sometimes YouTube doesn't like to sell to advertisers. And we're fine with that because what we do is more important than the money we might make. That said, any support you can give us to help keep the show going helps to make it bigger and better. And one good way to do that is through a subscription service called Patreon.com. You can go to Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage and give as little as $1 a month to help the show keep going. If you don't, that's fine. We're going to keep on making it anyway. We'd also appreciate if you subscribe to the show and maybe like the video if you liked it. That'd be great too. We'd especially like to thank our Surgeon Admiral Sam and our research associates Joe Sevitz and Carlos Yerga. We also have some great merch you might like. We have mugs and posters and lunch boxes and other stuff, and you can check it all out at hctmerch.com. I also have my book, it's still available, anywhere books are sold, The Bad Food Bible, I'd really appreciate it if you pick up a copy.